hello there. So, um, I got thinking recently, I'm going to a few gigs coming up, and uh, in fact, have one tomorrow night. I'm going to see Ashes to Angels and a brilliant band, well, in my opinion anyway, called These Days Numbered. And I thought, is there a certain type of etiquette involved with gigs? I guess to a certain extent there is. I mean, you know, shouldn't there be some kind of list of do's and don'ts and positive and negative experiences about going to gigs somewhere? So, here it is. Gig etiquette. I think there's a couple of things that are quite vitally important to consider before you go to a show. On the one hand, be considerate about what you eat. I mean, you might like that garlicky or that spicy meal, but you're going to stink, man, seriously. And we're not just talking breath here, we're talking the moment you sweat. Those smells are all going to come out. Now, you will sweat at a gig, that's a given, that's fine. But, you know, no one's going to want to stand next to you if you smell like the back end of a dog. Also, shoes. This is a big thing. Ladies, heels for three, four hours is not going to work. Seriously, trust me, it's going to hurt like hell. You're going to be standing up. No, just don't do it. Also, consider, you know, how much damage you might be able to do with these shoes. You might think that they look cool and they look comfy, but if you tread on someone's foot wearing those big boots, mm -mm, that ain't going to be comfy at all. Big pet peeve of mine, queue hopping. The amount of times I've been stood there and I've got there fairly early and got quite a good position in the queue thinking, yeah, I'm going to be, you know, in pretty quickly. And then somebody's just appeared out of nowhere, gone running to the front of the queue and gone, oh, hey, do you remember me from, like, the last gig that was on here? They don't even know them. And they're just like, oh, can I stand with you until the doors open? No, no, you can't. I mean... Some of us have been stood here for like an hour or something, queuing t to get a good position. Some people have been here all day, queuing to get a good position. And you've just gone and put yourself right at the front of the queue because you recognised someone vaguely from that show a couple of months ago. No, don't queue hop. It's incredibly rude. Get your butt to the back of the queue. You're still going to get in the venue. It's up to you to turn up on time, not everybody else. Also, know who you're seeing. There was this really embarrassing moment, okay? This is one of my favourite things ever. I went to the Killing Is Dead tour um, just over a year ago. <laughs> Strange noises. Um, I went to the um, Killing Is Dead tour just over a year ago and we were stood in line and all of a sudden these three guys walk down the length of the line and say hello to everybody who's waiting and the girl in front of me goes oh my god that's Keir Kemp from Fearless Vampire Killers but who on earth were the other two guys with them no idea who they were one of them was Lawrence Beveridge from Fearless Vampire Killers the other one was Luke Lucas from The Deadly Waiting co-headline tour between Fearless Vampire Killers and The Deadly Waiting and she did not know who she was going to see she was there because she recognised Keir Kemp. Oh, great. Yeah, so make, at least make sure you know who the headliners are. That kind of helps. If there are other people already at the barrier, don't push in. Just accept that they got there before you and they got the good spot. Um, as you'll be able to see, I'm flashing Twitter names up down the bottom. I suggest you go and follow these people because they're awesome. They contributed stories and this, this one comes from... So, in this particular case, her and her friend were stood at the barrier, and some girl decided she wanted to be at the barrier. And when they said, rightly, no, you know, they'd been queuing for ages and they'd, they'd legitimately got their place, and when they said, no, we're not going to let you push in, she tried to set fire to her friend's skirt with a lighter. Mind-blowing, isn't it? <laughs> anyway... The other thing is, oh, don't complain. If you're at the barrier and you've waited all day to try and get to the barrier and get that good spot, don't complain if you get a bit squashed. I mean, this is part and parcel of it. It's the risk you take going to the barrier. People are going to surge. If you're uncomfortable with it, don't do it. Just because you think you're getting the best view and the best position, you might be able to reach out and touch your favourite rock star. If you're going to complain about being squashed, 
Mm -mm. If, that, if you get claustrophobic, it's not for you. Trust me. If you're tall, don't deliberately obscure somebody's view. Um, you know, don't sort of just walk, think, oh, I want a better view, and walk forward. Um, consider who you're, you then go and position yourself in front of. I mean, luckily for me, this did happen at the Killing's Dead tour in Andover, uh, to me and somebody I met at the show, and she was even shorter than me, and I'm not the world's tallest person. These two guys put, put themselves in front of us, and we just went, oh, I'm really, really sorry, but you know, we, we can't see, and there's nowhere else for us to move to, because it's quite a small venue. And they just went, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, do you want to go in front of us? We can see all, all right, you know, it was six foot something. We were like, oh, yeah, we can see all right, do you want to just, like, go in front of us? And they were really, really nice about it, so that was really, really good. So although initially they'd obscured our view, they were really good about it, and by letting us go in front, we actually got to the front, which was nice. The other thing is sign making, and I've had this at shows as well, but, oh, my God, yeah, um... Rosie reminded me of it. If you're going to make a sign, absolutely fine. I mean, we can't stop you from making signs. But don't wave it around the entire time. And consider where you position yourself when you've got your sign. Because if you wave it around a lot, you're going to obscure somebody else's view. And their enjoyment of the show. It's not good. Okay, this story was a bit shocking. But actually I know what they mean because I've seen this myself as well. Um, mosh pits happen part and parcel of any sort of rock or metal show if you don't like it move yourself away from the pit okay just get yourself out of that situation don't go attacking people in the pit that's just weird you know and trying to get them to stop that's weird and wrong and just no also if you're in the pit and someone falls don't be a complete knob about it stop help them up you're all there to have fun and that way everybody can have fun together and keep on rocking okay bit rude and I've not heard of this because I've never been in the balcony before um, so this story kind of made me go what? seriously? Um, being on the balcony and being elbowed and having hair and clothes pulled and pushed and whatever to try and get you to move on the balcony it's incredible just be safe okay because also if you're up there it's the uh, sometimes a long way to fall. Just be considerate of other people, okay? It's not difficult. This was a really good one, actually. Um, and I've seen this as well. People who get to the front and they really don't look like they're enjoying it at all. And they just sort of stand there, stony face, or even glaring at the band. And you sort of think, why are you here? You don't look like you're enjoying it at all. You know, when my favourite band's on stage, I'm smiling, I'm singing along. You know, surely there must be something that moves within you, that's what music's about. That makes you feel something, that makes you want to be a part of it, that makes you want to enjoy the experience when you're there. So if you're not going to enjoy it, but you can see that there's somebody nearby who probably would, just get out of the way, you know. It might be that you don't like, like that particular band, just say to them, oh, you know, the next band on I really like, do you want to swap places and swap back again? Just don't be a dick about it, it's fine. Also, taking photos and stuff like that. I mean, everybody's got a camera on their phone nowadays, okay? People want to take photos, they want to take videos. Absolutely fine, no problem with that at all. It becomes a problem, though, when you're stood there and you're constantly on Twitter, Facebook, you're texting, whatever, during a band set. That is incredibly rude. You don't need to do that. Just don't. Put your phone away if that's all you're going to do with it, okay? Uh -huh. Peace de la resistance, my particular favourite pet peeve. After many shows, you might get the opportunity to meet your favourite band. Okay? Particularly at smaller venues. I've been lucky enough to do this several times with several of my favourite bands. And it's a brilliant experience. Very rewarding. You get to talk to them as human beings and not just as that rock god that you quite like to go and see. Or how you view them in your mind. They're tangible, they're real, and it's brilliant, and you can talk to them on a human level and get on with them, and I have made so many friends in bands as a result, and had so many positive experiences. You do get the odd one or two people who will try and make this as difficult for everyone else as possible. There are two that I am aware of, but one that I have personally experienced. And although I am not allowed to name names, 
I think if any of you watching this knows me really well, you'll know who it is. If you want to know who it is, leave me a DM in, on Twitter and I'll tell you. Honestly, I don't mind telling you there. This particular person, in Brighton last year when going to see Fearless Vampire Killers, there's a clue as to who it may well be, was so incredibly rude to me when I tried to introduce myself, even though if it wasn't for me, she would never have had tickets to the show. She was rude to me. She blanked me. And on top of that, when I was talking to Lawrence, tried to get in on that. Never going to happen, love. And also tried to distract Drew when I was talking to him, because apparently nobody else is allowed to talk to the band when she's around. I heard from many other people that she has done this to them as well. And there is one other person who is possibly worse and actually has made dangerous comments about various band members from Fearless Vampire Killers. So basically, what I'm saying is everybody looks forward to the meet and greet bit. Everybody wants to do that bit as much as actually see their favourite band on stage. It's all part and parcel of it. Don't make it difficult for everybody else. Don't try and monopolise their time and just accept that everybody's there for the same reason. They all love that band and they all want to have some time with them. And it might only be like 30 seconds for a photo, but if you ruin that for somebody, their night could feel shattered, no matter what other positive experiences they've had during the show. Basically, just don't be a dick. Sound advice for all of it, really. Going to a show? Don't be a dick. Until next time.